Hello class, today, today we talked about the three undefined terms, point, line, and plane, and then we use them to define the other terms, segment, ray, and opposite rays. So now, then we actually made predictions of how to name them and the symbols that go with them. So now as we check out what the mathematicians decided what they would pick and how your predictions came out. So let's see. First we have a point. They decided that it would be represented by a capital letter. So this would be called point A. Then we go to a line. A line, there's two ways to name a line. Either we can name it by two points on it with a line symbol above it or by a lowercase letter. So as you see here, we have line AB because there are two points on it and we have a lowercase l next to it. So you could say this is line AB, but it's important that we have the arrows on the symbol so we know it's a line, line BA or L for the lowercase. Finally, we have a plane. We can name it by a capital letter. It's important that we make sure that it's not a point. So if we just name it by one thing, we can't just have it be a point. Or we can name it by three points. So here I have a plane. Either I can name this one plane ABC or plane R. Once again, R is not a point because there's nothing, nothing here, there's not a point. So this is plane R or plane ABC. So that wraps up naming and the symbols, because these are the symbols I was talking about, the line. It's pretty much the only one that has so far in the point for these three undefined terms. And now we're going to go do an example with these. Sorry, I'm running around like crazy. On your paper, you're not, you don't have any points, so you have to add the actual little point ball points. But here, we have this figure. Number one, you're asked, name two other ways to name line QT. That's how it's read, line QT. So this is my line QT. Obviously, I can flip it around and I can say line TQ. Make sure you have a symbol. Down here, this actually is line M. So that's line M. Or QN. Q1 is on this line, so it can be line QN. For the next one, we have Name two other ways to name plain P. If you can't see, that's plain P. So that's this whole piece of paper here, that imaginary piece of paper we talked about. We can name it by three points, plain RQS or plain RQV. Now, you notice in red I wrote not N or T. What that means is point N and point T are actually not on that plane. And we'll get to that in a second. Finally, we're going to talk about name two other ways to name line RS. RS is right here. Well, obviously, I could flip it around. I could have SR. I could say RQ. I could say QS. These are all names for that line. Now, a question on your sheet that I added was, why is this part dashed? That part is dashed because it's actually going through the plane. What you can imagine is, is that line, is this the plane right here, and this line is actually going through it, like this. You can't really see it because I'm not going through the paper, but that's what the dotted line means. It goes in, it's dotted because it then went out of it, it went through. So that's the example for how we name points, lines, and planes. Sorry about that confusion right there. Now we're finally going to name segments and rays. When we name a segment, we name it by its two endpoints. So this we would say would be read as segment AB or segment BA. As you see here, this is my symbol. I have two endpoints. That's how I know this is a segment. I don't have the arrows because this isn't a line. It doesn't go on forever. It's a segment. So it's a segment AB or BA. Then we can have a ray. We name a ray by its endpoint first. That's important. The endpoint first, and then a point on it, which tells us the direction. So looking at this, this is red line A, sorry, red ray AB, ray AB. And you see how the endpoint is first. That's important. And you see how it's a ray, because it's only half of a line for our symbol. 
as you see here, I wrote ray AB does not equal ray BA. This is because if I say ray BA, it's not the same thing. So when it comes to rays, you have to be very, very careful how you name them. So let's go to example number two on naming segments and rays. We have, here we have line DEF or DF. Name, let's name some segments. I could have segment DE, DF, EF, and then all the opposites for those because it's the same. So ED, FD, and FE. Those are all the same. I can do that with segments. Names of rays. I can have DE, DF, ED, EF, FE, and FD. Now, rays are important how you name them, so make sure you name them correctly. Remember, you start with the end point and go with direction. So ED is different than EF. Opposite rays. We talked about earlier how we name them, but remember, it's the same as rays, but opposite rays are special because when they're combined, they form a line. So what two rays here, when you combine them, form a line? Well, that would be ray ED going this way, and ray EF going this way, when you combine them, you get the full line, so our opposite rays are ED and EF. That concludes the naming of points, lines, and planes, and the terms made from them. Hope you got a lot out of this. If you didn't, I suggest you rewind and stop, pause, and go over. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow in class.